Um, so we believe that Trevor was the youngest child to ever receive a pacemaker defibrillator. And then there are some genetic tests that you can do to um, confirm the diagnosis of Timothy syndrome. And he did not test positive for that diagnosis. And I live in the Silicon Valley, I'm in software, and you probably shouldn't do um, medical diagnosis by Google, mm -hmm. but I did start poking around on the internet, trying to find more studies on, um, on both long QT syndrome and Timothy syndrome. And um, I found an online support group for families with um, long QT, and they started pointing me towards a bunch of studies um, on long QT. And just comparing stories, it didn't seem like, I mean, aside from the fact that there was really not anything normal about Trevor's story, <laughs> it started feeling to me like other families that I talked to didn't get pacemaker defibrillators put in and were told that even with a definitive diagnosis, they couldn't have pacemaker defibrillators put in until between three and five years of life. That really, drug therapy is really effective and we could have taken a pharmacological um, solution to our problem instead of doing a surgery at such a young age. And there was just kind of a number of things that started, in my mind, adding up to Trevor getting care that was maybe kind of out, out of the standard of, of care, what, what I would call best practice for care. And every study that I read on it seemed to have Dr. Ackerman's name on it. And at some point, I posted on the group and said, OK, if I'm uncomfortable enough now that I'd like to get a second opinion, where should I go to get a second opinion? And some of the moms wrote back and said Seattle or Cincinnati or um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Dr. Ackerman, Dr. Ackerman, Dr. Ackerman. And we are in Northern California, and my husband and I sat down and talked about it and decided that Trevor really deserved a second opinion. Excuse me. Oh, and we thought, if we're going to get on an airplane, a day of traveling is a day of traveling, and taking your son to get a second opinion in Philadelphia, certainly, why not? You know, we would go to the person who wrote the studies. <laughs> and um, so I took a shot and emailed Dr. Ackerman. And my husband and I talked about it. Like, should we just say, hey, would you give us a second opinion? Or do we go for it and really tell him our whole story? And, and we said, OK, let's tell him the whole story and see if he's not compelled to meet the kid that maybe is the youngest kid in the world to have a pacemaker defibrillator. Like, maybe that's our hook. Maybe we'll get a piece of this man's mind. And so we kind of wrote the whole story of how it was that he came to have the Timothy's diagnosis that maybe wasn't confirmed after all, but still had the device. And what do we do now? And he literally emailed me back in about 15 or 20 minutes and said, I'm out of the country right now. But I would be pleased to give your son a second opinion. Could you call my scheduling um, desk and set up a phone call for us so that I could get to know your son better and we could figure out what our next steps are? Mm. And I just thought, he's out of the country. <laughs> and he, he emailed me back. And, um, and it was on a Friday afternoon, so wherever he was out of the country, it was probably, you know, and it was Friday, yeah, Friday afternoon, California time, 